So why does Yasser Qadi, an expert of the Quran, say that you can't just take a blank book and write down what Muhammad revealed? Because he knows that there are variants as well, and we can't trace those variants back to Muhammad. If you're claiming Muhammad released lots of readings, and then Uthman tried to reduce it to one reading, why is Uthman going against what Muhammad did rather than simply trying to support what Muhammad did? There is only one language, it's Arabic. Yeah, which, which Arabic Quran? What do you mean which Arabic Quran? I've just, I've just I've asked, watched, Nuri, which one? Which one is from Muhammad? It's not that simple, Aki. Why isn't it simple? I thought there was only one Quran and all the Muslims had memorized it. He's compared them to one another, they're all different. Not only are they all different, but someone has come along later and re-edited the text. Exactly, he says. Exactly. Now just think. Wait, wait, why are you grabbing me? Don't grab me. Don't grab me, bro. And then he became a Christian. Okay. And he abandoned this stuff. Uh, his reasons were that... Um, the so he left Christianity? When he left Christianity, became a Muslim, was a Muslim for two and a half years, and then went back, and then went back to being a Christian. How long do you think you will last for Christianity? God willing, for life, but obviously, you know... Yeah, I'm Bob. How are you doing, sister? You're right. you're so much nicer than the way you come off with the Well, the thing is, when I'm... When I'm well, that's because, that's because often, the, the reason why I'm having to shout is because I'm, I'm being shouted at, or I'm being spoken over, but you're obviously very nice and polite, so I can be nice and polite. Yeah. Nice to have a dialogue Exactly, exactly. Okay, so the things that he left his life the things I was hearing from your video. Yeah, yeah, the things on the video. So his essential arguments were that... Um, uh, no, 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 those, those were a separate things, that was a separate talk. So his reasons were that he found inconsistencies in Islamic theology that he couldn't get answers that um, he saw Jesus as being a better example than Muhammad um, and that he was uh, a bit distrustful of the hadith. He always found the hadith a bit shaky but then when he found evidence that the Quran has been changed that really knocked down everything that he believed about Islam. So he joined a religion without doing his whole research, research and was it? Was it coerced? Was it no, I don't think he wasn't coerced. He was convinced. Yeah. Exactly, that's my problem. We, we see in the park lots of people become Muslim who don't know the first thing about what they're joining. We see it all the time. People are giving their shahadas and the Muslims say, ah, the waqfa. And then you, you find out that these people don't actually know a damn thing about what they've just signed up for. Okay, so why would you do it? Why would you jump to such a big responsibility? That seems, as a logical person, uh, and I'm joining something that's going to change my life, yeah. and I want to find guidance, yeah. I would make sure I study what I'm looking for. Do you know what I mean? I totally agree with you. Do you know what Jesus said? Jesus tells, Jesus tells this story, he tells a parable, and it's about people becoming Christians. And what he says is, go away and count the cost. No one, no one buys a field without first going away and counting the cost. And, and that's actually part of Christian faith. We, we teach that someone becomes a Christian over a year or two and they learn the faith for a year or two before they're baptised. Because we don't want people to make these instant decisions based on emotion. But the thing is, in Islam, the Dawah team here particularly, will, will they'll take, if I just go up to someone and say, I want to give my Shahada, they'd take it like that. But they'll think you took your, you, you took your time. And well, the thing is, even in Islam, the first thing is to educate yourself. When you learn, you can't just dump into deep waters. But that's exactly what they yeah. did with the guy that's just left Islam. Is yeah. that they took his Shahada without, see, without making sure that he understood what he was doing. But that's not their responsibility, that's their personal responsibility. He, he just came here for, for how to join Islam. So, so my, yeah. my, my point is that in Christianity... If I wanted to join Christianity right now, and I told you I wanted to join Christianity, you would assume that I know what I'm joining. No, we wouldn't actually. Mm -hmm. no, well, let me just deal with the ladies' question first. Ladies before gents, be polite. So in terms of, in terms of, um, in terms of our faith, if you said I wanted to become a Christian, what we would do is we would plan your baptism a year down the road, and then we would teach you the faith for a year. It's called catechism. And you would be called, you, your, your position in the church would be a catechumen. And so you would be a, someone who's a catechumen becoming Christian. And then we would baptize you. At this point, you become Christian. And so we know we would not embrace, you would not become a Christian like that. That is not the Christian way. We don't do that. There you go. And there's another point to be genuine students of knowledge. I yeah. know that you could be a, a Christian in waiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're called, they're called catechumens. Go ahead.
Why would someone ask them to convert to Christianity if they're not learning with it? Like if, why would someone come to Islam in it and say one comes to if they haven't read up on it? Make sense. Well, unfortunately, we know that that happens a lot. It happens sometimes. I always say a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it seems that when, when you when you look in, do you know what Pew Research is? Yeah. Pew Research. P E W Research. They're a group of academics from around the world that study religion. And in America, they've done a study of those Muslims who are coming into Islam and those who are leaving it. The number of those leaving it is equal to the numbers coming into it. It's a, 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 a rotating door. It's rotating door. Well, you go and argue with Pew Research, bro, because this is their findings. And some it tells me you, you're, you're not an academic and you haven't studied it. So you take it over Pew Research. It'll take you two minutes to Google it. You can find academics. You can on how you're looking at it, right? So it depends on what, how you're looking at the findings. Yeah. So, let's so I can have a finding, I can have a, a research paper, and you can have a research paper, and we can both have... But Pew Research is a collection of academics who work together. They peer review one okay, another's papers peer, and research. Okay. So Pew Research, P-E-W Research. Google it right now. Fact check me if I'm lying. You can embarrass me on camera. I don't want to embarrass you. No, you're not going to embarrass me because I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. So let me just tell you some of the things that Pew Research finds. Pew Research, how many, put your hand up if you think that Christianity is a shrinking religion. I'm just asking you, if you believe that Christianity is a religion that's shrinking. Do you think that? Okay, everyone's gone shy, but normally Muslims will, in the park, say, no, one second, sir, one second, I'm asking, answering this brother's question, patience, please. Age before beauty. So, in terms of, in terms of Pew Research, they show that contrary to what Muslims believe, Christianity is still a growing religion. Contrary to what Muslims believe, Christianity is the fastest growing religion in Africa. Contrary to what Muslims believe, in terms of the number of converts, Christianity is the fastest growing religion. However, however, Christianity in Europe also has the highest numbers of apostasy, which is, which is the reason why Christianity is not outgrowing Islam. Because the rates of apostasy in Europe are balancing out the rates of conversions that we're making in other places of the world. Pew Research proves that Islam is the fastest growing religion. But it's that. Now, notice this guy is going, that's not true. That's not true. And then when I said Islam is the fastest growing religion, he's going, yes, it is. <laughs> he's, he's like, I'm quoting Pew Research, and he's saying when he doesn't like what he's hearing, it's not true. But then when I say something that he likes, he says, that's true. You know what that's called? That's called confirmation bias. Go look at it. Up. Let me finish my answer to the first one. The fact is, Christianity is still a growing religion. And it is growing now faster amongst Muslims than it has ever done in 1400 years of history. There are more Muslims becoming Christians now than at any other time in history. That would still count if you didn't join and then leave. Didn't know anything about Islam. That would still count. Yes, that, that, that would count, yes. Yes. Yeah, even though, even though lots of Muslims become Muslims without ever researching it. Sorry, that doesn't, uh, if Muslims leave, and if, sorry, I'm sorry. I can talk to myself, it's not important. Yeah, 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 come to me. I'm just saying that you still count, even though you joined Islam no, without no, fully knowing what you were joining, if I'm correct. I would say that because you, you are also um, privy to the information that people give you as well. And obviously, there is a tradition correct me if you want to see if you want to If there's something you don't understand within Islam, the common practice is to go to a brother or a sister you trust, like uh, someone with knowledge, and you to them. Something I did quite frequently. And he, also, and he also listened he also listened to the Islamic Dawah channels for over a year before giving a shot under a year. But you didn't go to the source. And the fact that the source that you actually chose to, to follow like Islam and you never went back to it. Okay, that's fair. Because I didn't I never done more reading. I won't deny that. However, still what the information that you get given on these videos here at Speaker's Corner, or even uh, by fellow brothers when you join the fold, should it not be reliable information? Really? It should. So if that, rely if that information proves false, do isn't that a reason then to question Islam? For instance, put your hand up if you've been told that there's only one Quran. 
There you go, all of you. How many of you know about the Hafs, Wash and Dori Quran? Hafs, Wash and Dori? Uh, yeah, Hafs, yes. Wash and Dori. Yeah. I've heard of the different Qur'at and the translations. Thank you very much. So, and they have different words, don't they? Meaning the same thing. Have different translations. No, different, different words don't mean the same thing. No. You could translate a word differently. No, yes. they don't mean the same thing. No, for I instance. Know this. I know this. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. He, he said that. Yeah. Yeah. That's different translation. No, they don't. Different yeah, dialects. Because it's Quran that says king, right? When it says, when it's speaking about Allah. Yep. Yeah. And then it says about. Uh, owner. Yeah, the owner. Yes. It's, it's both the same thing. No, it isn't. It is. They are different words. In the context that it's speaking about, it says. No, it isn't. The same thing. I, no, it isn't. Because one says king and one says owner, those are not the same words. That's what I'm saying. Let me ask you this question. Is the same thing in the is, same context. Is every owner is every owner a king? No. Is every king an owner? Yes. No. There are dethroned kings, there are kings who are dispossessed. Okay, but when we're talking about the same that context, it makes sense. It makes sense and it expresses the same thing. What about what about uh, that's, what uh, listen, about, listen, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying yeah, different yeah, yeah. for translation. Arabic is a very rich language. You yeah. have words that means many different things. And that's the whole thing of the Quran. No, no, no that's I, all, can that's I interject? All um, if I get this whole argument that the Arabic language is a rich language, etc. However, the Quran does make the claim it's from God. Yes. So now, when it makes this claim, surely it can't, we can't have a situation where there are different words popping up. Because, 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 because it's meant to be Allah's unchanged word. It's meant to be His eternal word. So why has it got different words? And, 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 because, sorry, the most important word, consistent word. Well, yes. so, so yes. is the one but but it doesn't have I just, I just explain why it is, because there's different translations of the Quran. No, we're talking about English. the Arabic. We're not talking about the English. In English we're talking Arabic. about Arabic. Arabic. There's no difference. In Arabic, there's no difference. No, there are. When? There are. I'll give you an example. You can Google this right now. Google it right now. Pull it up on YouTube. There is a channel run by a doctor called Dr. Daniel Brubaker. And he's looked at all the oldest copies of the Quran. The, the nine. The nine oldest copies of the Quran. He's compared them to one another. They're all different. Not only are they all different, but someone has come along later and re-edited the text to insert words. Yes, you need to watch it. I'll come back to you next week. Yes, that's absolutely fine. You do that. Give him the name of the channel, though. Yeah, yeah. By Dr. Daniel Brubaker. And just to help you prepare for this debate, just to help you prepare for this debate, you should also look at Keithy Small, textual variants of the Quran. Variants of the Quran. Textual variants of the Quran. What's the first one? What's the first one? Uh, Dr. Daniel Brubaker, who has a YouTube channel called Variants of the Quran, Textual Variants. Daniel, how do you spell Brubaker? Yeah. It was changed during the Ottoman period, the Ottoman Turks did it. Well, there wasn't a standardized Quran until the 1920s. Is it the 1920s? Well, there was an attempt to standardize it. Yeah, go on, sir. You were speaking about how the people that leave Islam are the same amount. In America, in the United States. Only in America? In the United States, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was bro. It's only one. Listen, we don't know this guy. So we don't know him. So what? So what? So what? So what? So what? So You get to know him. You get to know him. We don't care about him. We're not going to follow him. Well, if you don't care, then why are you even... And he came in Arabic. And he's saying Arabic. So what? That's it. Yeah, and there's different... And he's saying nine. There's different Arabic There's different Arabic Quran. There's only one language. It's Arabic. Yeah, which Arabic Quran? The Arabic normal. Which Arabic Quran? What do you mean, which Arabic Quran? I've just... I've just... I've asked Wash, Dori, which one? Which one is from Muhammad? I release more than one. So why? When, so when Uthman had all, what, what did Uthman do then? No, no. Uh, he's going to talk. So he knows about it. <laughs> yeah, burning. So if, if Muhammad released more than one Quran, and then Uthman burnt all the variants, why? Why did Uthman burn all the other variants? Because they wanted to put it in like a. I've seen the, this argument before. Yeah. They wanted to put it all in one simple uh, reading. Yes. So, was, yeah. They did not change it. They did not change it. But when, if, they, when if they burnt all the other readings and reduced it to one, yeah, right? 
then why why are they going against what you're claiming Mohammed did? You're claiming Mohammed released lots of readings, and then Uthman tried to reduce it to one reading. Why is Uthman going against what Mohammed did rather than simply trying to support what Mohammed did? Square that circle for me. Wait, he said he said more than one. You're saying one. Only one. Yeah, he said more than one. I didn't say it was more than one. He said more than one reading. Is what you said. You said more than one reading. That does not equate to more. Right. Does not what, what you believe more. a Christian? Yeah, of course. How many Bible there is? Yeah, yeah. How many Do Bible? We be, yeah, 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 I'll answer that question. That's absolutely okay. fine. Christians have different numbers, uh, different books in the Bible. Exactly. There are texts with variants in the Bible. Yeah. But please notice, I know about all of this stuff. I'm not troubled by any of it. Do you know why? Well, one second, Bible one family. second, one second. Let's do one question at a time, bro. Cool yourself. Yeah. The fact of the matter is we don't believe about the Bible what you believe about the Quran. What you believe about the Quran means that textual variance in the Quran is a problem. What we believe about the Bible means that textual variance in the Bible is not a problem. We believe different things about our books. Did I say that? Right, so we believe in the Bible, right? But if you're going to compare, our Bible stands kind of somewhere between how you see the Hadiths and how you see the Quran. No, 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 hold on. No, stop, 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 stop. No, you're asking me about what I believe as a Christian and allow me to explain it. So don't interrupt because I already know what you believe about the Quran and that's why I know that textual variance amongst Quranic manuscripts is a problem. If you're saying that the Quran is an eternal, unchanged, uncreated book that was revealed directly by Allah to Angel Gabriel, to Muhammad, and then written down by scribes, he says, yes, so I do know what Muslims believe about the Quran. But, but if those Qurans are different, then that means that the human has interfered in the transmission of the text. But Christians don't believe that about the Bible. One second, I'm still answering your first question. Christians don't believe, because you keep interrupting. Don't, don't, don't interrupt then, and then I don't need to raise my voice. I only have to raise my voice because Muslims consistently interrupt. Allow me to finish my point. So as Christians, what are you doing right now? What's he doing right now? Yes, you see, you're saying that he's, you don't, but what is he doing right now? Yes, do you notice, week after week after week, we just find cognitive dissonance amongst Muslims. They're literally standing there interrupting me and the Muslim next to him is literally saying, no, we don't interrupt. So, let me answer the question about the Bible. So let me answer your question about the Bible. We believe that the Bible is inspired by God's Spirit, but it is the words of men. That's what we believe. That is what I'm inviting you to believe. I'm not inviting you to believe something like Islam. I'm inviting you to believe in something that is different to Islam. Really? Do you? But we don't, I don't believe in your Bible. It has changed. So now you're just contradicting yourself. Yeah, I believe in the Bible. You just said I believe in the Bible, and then you said I don't believe in your Bible. So you don't believe in the Bible then? It has changed. Brother, you're saying it's changed. Prove it. There is a New Testament and Old Testament. I, have, I don't have knowledge, but I know for a fact it has changed. Right, listen to what he just said. I don't have knowledge. The Bible has changed. There is an Old Testament and a New Testament. Exactly. That's, Do you listen? that's showing you that it has changed. Did you? That's the Christians you. are laughing at you. No, but the Christians are laughing at you. Listen to your logic. I don't have knowledge. Show you the Bible changed. has changed. There's an Old Testament and a New Testament. That's, it, yeah. That's his argument. Yeah, that's it. You don't know what you're talking about. Christians believe in the Old Testament and the New Testament no, as don't. the Bible. No, yeah, don't. do we? Oh, he says he doesn't. No, 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 no they don't. They don't. I'm not Christian, but right. say we don't believe in the Old Testament. Do you believe in the New Testament and the Old yes. Testament? Yes. No, I'm a Christian. I believe in the New friend. Testament and the Old Testament. Okay. You're a Christian. Do you believe in the New Testament and the Old Testament? Of course, yes. Brother, do you believe in the New Testament and the Old yes. Testament? Yes. No, they don't. See, you're a Christian. Yeah, yeah. Do you believe in the New Testament and the Old Testament? Yeah, yeah. So, so he's lying. <laughs> I'm not saying he's lying, but oh, wait. Christian, they don't believe on it. So, you've just had... Go, please. So you've just had Christian, 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 Christian all tell you, oh, just for the camera, so you are all lying. Ah. All lying. <laughs> this, is what, this is what the Muslim is saying. This is the kind of ridiculous logic that is used by Muslims to sustain their arguments against Christianity. 
Not any real study. He's literally just said he doesn't have any knowledge. So, answer this question. Christians believe in the New Testament and the Old Testament. Yeah? Right. There we go. Okay, good. They see that's that's listening. No, no, no. I'm trying to Right. Chris, you, now, you, you said that the Bible has been changed, right? To show that the Bible has been changed, well, you have to be able to show me the autograph. Do you know what an autograph is? Yeah, no, no, no. I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. Finish, finish your question. I'll prove it to you. Okay. He's going. He's going to prove it to me, ladies and gentlemen. If you are going to substantiate, I'm, 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 I'm talking to everybody. If you are going to substantiate, do you want to listen to the answer or not? speaking, but you're talking to the Yeah, I'm making sure everyone can hear me. No, no, nobody can. Do you want to listen? Yes. Right. Okay. So for you to substantiate that the Bible is corrupt. What you need to do is you need to produce the original document and do the comparison. Yeah. Now he said he's going to prove that the Bible is corrupt, which means that he's going to show the original Injil and the original Torah and the original Zabur so that we can sh do the comparison oh, and see that they are corrupt. Go on, I'll prove it. No, no, they're not proof, they're not proof. Nah, yeah, the, the, first, the first Bible he came in, in the Greek language. Alright? Yeah? Yeah, do you have it? Hold on, hold on, do you have it? The original have autographs? It? No, we don't have the original exactly. autographs. Right, hold on. Exactly. Right, exactly, he says. Exactly. Yeah. Now just think. So you don't have wait, wait, why are you grabbing me? Yeah. Don't no grab touchy, me. No touchy, no touchy. Don't grab me, bro. No Why are you touchy. grabbing me? Control yourself. Keep your hands to yourself. Relax. Keep your hands to yourself. Yeah. So, he says exactly. Exactly. Try it. He says exactly. He says exactly because we don't have the original autographs. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't have the original autographs, you have nothing to compare. So you can't say that the original was lost. Because if you don't have the original to look at, you can't prove that the original was lost. You can only prove that the original was lost if you have the original and then what came later and the two are different. But no Muslim can produce the original autographs. So they are lying to you when they say that we can prove that the Bible has been corrupted. They are lying to you because nobody has the original autographs. Not the Christians, not the Muslims, not the Jews. Which means we can't make the comparison. But here's what we do know. We know that there's over 5,000 Greek manuscripts. We know that there's over 10,000 Latin manuscripts. We know that there are over 5,000 manuscripts in ancient Slavonic, in ancient Coptic, in ancient Syriac, in ancient Sla um, uh, Gothic, and amongst a number of other languages, including Ethiopian. We know that these manuscripts were transmitted independently of one another. And we know some other things. We know that these manuscripts demonstrate that the problem that Christians really face is not that the original has been lost, but that over 2,000 years of copying, the text has picked up some extra words here and there, like the adultere pericope, or the comma Johannan, or the longer reading of Mark. We know where these extra words are. We know when they were introduced. We are able to find their lineage, and we're able to be honest about the textual variants. The problem that Christians face isn't that we've lost the originals, it's that the originals are there with extra words. That is the problem that we face. That's the real problem of textual criticism. The reality is, brothers and sisters, that the Muslims have been lied to by their scholars. Because the scholars are not being honest about what textual criticism actually reveals. Textual criticism actually reveals the stability of the text. That's what it really reveals. 
Not that the text has been lost, but that the text is there with some extra words. But textual criticism is now being done to the Quran. And one of those same textual scholars found about the Quran that there are different Qurans. Daniel Brubaker has identified different Qurans. Dr. R. Puyin of Germany has identified different Qurans. Dr. Keithy Small has identified different Qurans. Mohammed Hijab asked Dr. Yasser Kadi. He said to him, Dr. Kadi, if I give you a mushaf, could you write down what was revealed by Muhammad? A mushaf is just an em a blank book that you write the Quran on. Now Yasser Kadi should have just said, yes, of course we can, because we've all memorized the Quran and we can just write it down and there's only one Quran. What did he actually say in reply to Muhammad Hijab's question? He said, don't push me. Don't push me. It's not that simple, Aki. It's not that simple. Why isn't it simple? I thought there was only one Quran and all the Muslims had memorized it. So why does Yasser Kadi, an expert of the Quran, say that you can't just take a blank book and write down what Muhammad revealed? I'll tell you why. Because he knows that there are variants as well. And we can't trace those variants back to Muhammad. That's why he said that. I'm sorry, I can't hear you through your scarf. I can't hear you through your scarf. I can't hear him through his scarf. What? <laughs> Say again? Bro. So, guys. Guys, if you have been told that there is only one Quran, you have been lied to. If you have been told that the Bible has been corrupted and cannot be trusted, you have been lied to. I challenge any Muslim to show me a doctrine, a fundamental doctrine of the Christian faith that is compromised by a textual variant. Show me one. You can't. Can you? You can. Great. Oh, you can't. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, bring one. Bring one. Bring one. Bring one that can listen to the question fairly, though. The, the question is, can you bring me a textual variant that compromises a fundamental doctrine of the Christian faith? Just one. Of course you can. He asks me why I'm speaking. That's fine. I'm speaking because as a Christian, as a Christian, I see the regular, I see the regular Muslims. You see, he's not listening, so that's I'll talk to the crowd. I see the Muslims who come here regularly in the park. Muhammad Hijab, Hashim, Mansour, Shamsi, and Hamza, and they attack the Christian faith all the time, week in and week out. So as a Christian, if they can attack my faith, I can attack their faith. My faith says that I should love everyone, but it doesn't say that I have to love ideas. It doesn't say that I have to love beliefs. It doesn't say that I have to love doctrines. And if those beliefs and those ideas and those doctrines are against my religion, then I can attack it and I can defend my religion. And that is why I'm here. Yes. So the brother quotes a verse in the New Testament accurately that says that those that we should have no fellowship with those who are outside of the apostolic faith that we shouldn't even bring a false teacher into our homes. There are people who are calling themselves Christians, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Oneness Pentecostals, Unitarians. 
These people are not Christians and we should have no fellowship with them. Don't even bring them into your home. A Christian is one who believes in the apostolic faith of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. That is a Christian. So what you say, what you say is true? Yes, what he's saying is true. Yeah. But now, let's just look at what Islam says. Islam says, fight the unbeliever until they say the, the Shahada, until they pray as the Muslims pray, until they pay the Zakat, or until they feel themselves subdued. So he thinks he's proven a point by quoting from the Bible that says, have no fellowship with those of no, who are not of the faith. But his religion teaches him to make war against the unbeliever. Your turn. What was your question? Faith, hope and charity. Text is a variation on charity. The original translation was love. Oh, charity and uh, charity no, and love. Charity, charity and love. Agape can be translated as charity or love. Both are accurate translations. No, there's a great difference between no. charity and love. Textual variation. You ask for one, no. I give you one. What, what you is, ask for one. No, I didn't. Firstly, right. Well, let's just you deal with that. You to be a Muslim okay. to give you one. No, I didn't. I didn't. So let me let me just deal with it. The brother has made the argument. That there is a textual variation between faith, hope, and love, or faith, charity, and love. This is in Corinthians. Now, the brother doesn't know the word agape can be translated accurately as love or as charity. Why? Because agape is the act, an act of selfless giving to another person without reciprocation and what do you call the act of giving to someone selflessly without the hope of reciprocation you call it charity you can call it love or charity you're talking no it's not a textual variant of the greek it is a translation variant of english you don't know the word in greek is the same it's agape try again what about the Hebrew? The, gr the Greek, what about the Hebrew? Brother, the New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew. Uh, and that's where we're taking it. Faith, hope, and charity. Yes, it comes from the Greek. The New Testament comes from... So, do you want to give another one? Or perhaps you would like to concede that maybe you're not as well informed as you He's think you are. He's on me. He's on me. Is it possible? that given the example that you've used and the statements that you've made that like so many people who dismiss Christianity you are do not, you don't know as much as you think you do Of course I don't know as much as I think I do There you go ridiculous thing to state There you go It's a ridiculous thing there to you state go. Of right. course I don't So brother, my challenge to you and my challenge to everyone is to bring me a textual variant that fundamentally compromises one of the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith. If you can't do that, then your arguments about textual variants invalidating the Christian faith are flawed. Are flawed. So, try again. The Philoquai. The Philoquai is in the Creed. It is yeah, not in the New Testament. Yeah, and it's a, it caused how many wars and this, this, is it Nicaea that they decided upon? So firstly, firstly, the, the, the Philippi is connected to the creeds. I'm not asking about the creeds. I'm asking, no I'm not. All the way from the beginning, the debate and the discussion has been about the Bible. The Bible is not the creed of Nicaea. So there's second attempt. Well, that one I'll take as a win. How do you take that as a win? We're talking about the, we're talking about the Bible. There you go. It's like, I, I, I lost the point, but I'm going to claim victory anyway. This is the example of playing chess against a pigeon. He basically struts across the chessboard, knocks over all the pieces, shits on the board, and then says, I won! <laughs> It's a bit harsh, but okay. Yeah, we're good, we're good. So I'll ask you again. I, I, I'm racking my brain. Okay, is it possible? I don't have my... Is it possible, brother? I know less than I think I know. Yes, of course. So maybe... Stop with that. Maybe, maybe what this invites you to do is to think again, to look again. 
the, the Christian course. faith. Of course, I, I do it daily. I'm sure it is. Okay. No, we should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are. I'm, I, I will find another. Carry on. Okay. So, the challenge to the Muslims who can hear my voice, the challenge to Muslims who read this. The Christian faith does not depend upon the Bible. That is a fact. You don't believe me? Read the, the first four verses of Luke. Theophilus believed in the Gospel before the Gospel of Luke was written. So he didn't need the Gospel of Luke to believe the Gospel. So your challenge then is to find me a textual variant that compromises a fundamental doctrine of the Christian faith. Okay, the heretic wants to do that. Come. <laughs>